You're listening to the Talking Tough Podcast. Creating tough minds for fitness, nutrition, and business. With your hosts, Rob Foster and Josh Phelps. So in today's episode, we are going to be covering Stoptober. And what that really means, what it does, and how we get on from there. The top three habits of successful clients. So the things that we see with clients that uh, possibly make them successful. Let's say there's lots of other things that may come into things that some of the big habits that they do, they bring to play that make them successful that we see. Creating the right environment to succeed. Is your environment, is everything around you, surrounding you, giving you the ability to succeed, or is it holding you back where you're at? Uh, we're going to get a gym fail, which is actually not a gym fail, but a sporting fail today mm. from Roberto. And he is, uh, I've got to be honest with you, not happy about it. I've seen physical demonstrations of the fail today. This was taken, this took place yesterday, was it, Rob? Yeah, I and mean, then uh, I've got kind of an injury, which is... If you're I watching the video, he's clasping his hand very I'm extending my hand uh, gingerly. And, and, just, uh, gripping, just very extending, gripping. Something's clicking in there, which isn't good. Um, it actually happened by uh, by swinging a golf club and coming out of my hands without even realizing, basically. So again, you probably, uh, you've heard our golf stories for, for months and months now, but um, if you're bored, then switch off now. However, uh, if you have played golf or you, your partners play golf and they they tell you when they when they go and play in the rain, it gets a little bit tricky to, to grip a club that you're swinging at maybe 100 miles an hour or whatever you know really fast uh there's water between your grip and the actual grip of the club it becomes a bit slippy and you can you can imagine sort of what happened basically so i've gone like everything has got soaked it's that rain that gets you wet it's that drizzle that constant you, there's there's rain that you know it's going to be building up guys it's building it up here we go <laughs> the uh, slight bit of rain you can you can hold and scope yeah, up that's, that's what yeah. i gather yeah but the uh, the, <laughs> the glove was soaked the grips were, were dripping wet, um, struggling on, you know, getting there. But um, took a swing, didn't even feel any different really, to be honest. Somehow, must have hit, obviously, when you hit the ball with an iron, you take a little bit of ground, a little bit of turf. It must have just dug in. The grip, my grip completely slipped off the club. My, I literally went through the swing as I normally would. Club wasn't there, obviously it went flying out of my hand. Somehow it's, it's hit the ball backwards a couple of feet. <laughs> Like everyone, the people I'm playing with have looked forward, obviously. I'm like, it's there, it's behind. And uh, not only that, but I did it on the second hole, the next hole as well. So it's not a one-off thing. It was literally, it was just slipping out my hand. So then I, I kind of lost my head and I was like, well, this is it, I'm done. Picking up my ball, I'm going in. I stormed off, <laughs> no, chucked the toys um, out of the pram. I say I wouldn't be able to help but laugh. I've got, a, I've, I'm not actually very good in terms of golfing etiquette for that because Golf's one of these things where people get pretty serious about it. Like as much as you try not to, sometimes you can go out and enjoy it and whatever. But it's hard if you if you're because like you're a good golfer, right? So if you're especially mm, if you're a good golfer for for someone to literally let go of the golf club <laughs> and the ball to go backwards, it's pretty um, it's pretty insane. It's uh, it's a it's an odd thing to do. I'd find it hilarious. I'd probably be on the floor and you'd probably well, I mean, you've seen me down um, with a golf club and and beating me up on the golf course. So you've, you've seen one of the the when my foot slipped out of the way. I've never yeah. slipped, like my back foot slipped when, and I literally hit it on a right angle. Uh, that's, it's just something that when, when you when you go through a, a golf swing, it's pretty, um, it's, it needs a lot of finesse, right, doesn't it? But it also needs a lot of power. It's quite a technical thing. Probably one of the most technical sports to play, I'd say. Um, with all these things that are going to be tight, you know, timing Can't has to be perfect. The arguments against that, by the way, there's going to be so many arguments coming back against that. It's technical, technical. Cool. it's like, yeah. like you're just doing a ball with a club, walking around <laughs> after a ball. I'm not yeah. having that. But so, uh, yeah. you only know if you play it that how how much how little you have to be off on anything. Is so many angles and things. Um, yeah, my mates had an argument about off topic really, but what was more technical, um, snooker or golf? Okay. And obviously, it's got it's got to be golf. Snooker is the angles, I know, and it's a you know, but. I don't know. It's, uh, there's, there's golf is definitely up there. I think. <laughs> Saying that, love it. Someone like an, you know, an F1 driver, that's pretty technical. To yeah, me. I was going to say. I've got. I think we, even <laughs> I'm, I play golf. I've got. Uh, it's technical, but there's got to be some. There's got to be anyway, some things out there that are a little bit hard. The to technical go. thing here is that I didn't have any wet weather gear that could survive that rain. Oh, and oh, now, yeah, it's oh, so it's your equipment. Now it's going to uh, have to be like, what can I do to keep dry? Well, buy more equipment, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, I, was, no, I think I was the only one carrying a bag, which I was like, well, at least I'm getting some exercise here. They were walking with a trolley, which now I need a trolley. <laughs> yeah, I just don't think you, I'm you're the age. You're fatigued, mate. Be, you're <laughs> fatigued. So we are now on the, what day are we now? I was going to say the 5th of October. 
5th of October. Mm. How has that year gone so quick? Anyway, 5th of October. Um, I'm still sat here. Last week, we weren't sure if I would be. If, uh, Another week to Little go. baby Phelps had arrived. But unbelievably, he is staying in. And why wouldn't he? Wow. It's not just, a he. It's oh, just, it's just, just kind of... It, nah, it? I, it's just... I just to be honest, mum keeps calling it her. I keep calling it he. It could be gender fluid. You don't know what's going to happen these days. Do you know what I mean? It's 2020. These things, it could, it could be whatever it wants to be, I guess. Um, You're hoping it'd be but, a boy or... no, I don't really mind. No, no, listen, get out of my head. Get out of my head. It's, uh, <laughs> it's rainy outside. And why wouldn't you be staying in if you could? The warm womb. Um, but yeah, Stoptober. So people are doing... Um, Stoptober, so, so I guess it, I'm, I'm pretty much guessing everyone knows what Stoptober is. But if you but why, don't know, why this? Why it te- um, yeah, uh, traditionally this month because it's kind of like the. I think it's because it's sober October and it rang. <laughs> is that the only reason? I'm pretty sure because it's like anything, isn't it? It's like it's uh, not like the summer. You've had a hard summer, like drinking, and then you get get be. through September. You're like, actually, now I better stop because I want to resume that I'm November, pretty December sure for Christmas. The the British public are more because it rhymes that we've gone with that mm-hmm. sober for October, yeah. and it's now turned to stop October because November. people have obviously uh, I don't know want to stop other things. Not everyone drinks. It could be drugs. It could be chocolate. It could be whatever, but. People are doing this. They're, they're dropping what they seem to see as um, things that maybe aren't great for them. So a lot of people, um, some people even get sponsored for this, don't they? They, they, mm-hmm. so they go out, they try and get sponsorship. Um, I always, it, make, it does make me giggle because I love it when people try to get sponsorship for stopping drinking and they possibly have like one glass of red wine of an evening. I'm like, yeah, I think there's, there's probably harder challenges out there. Mm-hmm. But fair enough, they're doing it. And if they raise some money for a good cause, then happy days and please sponsor away. Um, but yeah, the, the Stoptober thing is, from from my point of view, is I always find it very interesting because, as I said, it makes me giggle when there's somebody who's stopping something that's not actually that challenging for them, maybe. Like, you mm-hmm. know, they have a one night a week where they have a drink. Like, if I was to give up alcohol, it'd just be... There's no sponsorship there. Yeah. I mean, I don't really do it. I'm definitely not doing it really at the moment, obviously. But, um, you know, but what people do think look at is it's like this, oh, you know, week one is down. It's a real challenge. You've got three more to go. But they're almost looking at the end point to go back to doing mm-hmm. the thing that they're trying to stop doing. So, yeah, I guess it, it's a case of I'm stopping it for a month. And actually, if it's for you to control that and um, I guess be able to look that you can control it. Because there are things out there that we do or say habitually that probably aren't that great for us. But can it become a longer term thing? I think that's that's what we've got to do. And, and what we've looked at and things that... Um, uh, people who are often successful with stopping something a little bit further and longer term is when they replace it or an action or something else that it gives them something to do. Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously, I'm not saying stop drink and go to drugs or, you know, you know you're not looking for a like for like bad thing yeah, going yeah. on over there. Get like a Haribo habit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, and and often there are people that will try this and then they end up having things that are just as detrimental mm-hmm. sometimes. And it's like, oh, no, oh, well, I've given up the Mars bar, but I've had... 55 rice cakes with yeah. chocolate on the top. Yeah. It's like, no, well, no, that know, like doesn't, nuts, that doesn't. And, nuts and seeds or whatever, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but I eat, now I eat just a bag of almonds a day. Yeah, well, mm, okay. that's yeah. twice the amount of calories. So you <laughs> They're healthy, go back, right? Go back to your yeah. mouth bar, to be honest. It's probably yeah. going to keep you in more. Oh, I'm not losing any weight. Since I've dropped alcohol, I haven't lost any weight. I can't believe it. I didn't drink for the whole of October. Yeah, but what did you do? Oh, well, I sat there and ate crisps and chocolate. And, you know, it was almost like that yeah. Saturday night feeling. I need to be uh, enjoying myself or whatever. I'm not drinking alcohol, so I do it. So... What can you do instead of? And this is when, actually, if we can start to put different actions in and replacements with maybe something that's a little bit more positive, we can get that. keeps popping. Pop into there. Yeah, really really popping. Um, yeah. Is that me? I don't know, possibly. Dry Sorry. Something, um, <laughs> pop it. Um, but, you know, the the whole art of putting something else in there that's possibly better, as such, maybe a better habit. So um, this October, it's not a stop October thing. It's actually only because our order came in the other day. We've started with our sort of a, a mushroom you know teas yeah. and such so that in the evening is going to be my replacement for and this is something i actually did when i, I went on a strict diet i put in herbal teas but um we'll go a little bit more into this but this, this sort of uh, you know blend of mushroom cacao and, and you know having that in the evening instead of going through what i was doing was half uh, greek yogurt uh, thing with a load of granola a bit mm. of honey and it was lovely but it wasn't good it was a yeah. load of calories I didn't need. It started off with just the, the, a good possibly habit, which was the um, you know the Greek yogurt with a bit of whey, which is quite a nice evening snack. 
produced, you know, gave me some protein, good stuff, losing it for the evening, uh, before bed, sleep, recovery, all the fun stuff. That soon switched out from granola mm. and honey, which then becomes a completely different ball game. So what um, was the um, what was the changing thing to switch the to when it went from good to a bad, or like a, it progressed onto a worse. Uh, Worst snack. Well, if I'm really honest, it's the no sim- plan. The, well, yeah, the simple, well, simple, more, even more simple than that is I ran out of way, strawberry right. way, and I was like, all oh, right, I've got Greek goggle, what am I going to have with that? And so I'd bought some granola randomly as well. It wasn't like a thing, but I, and I do love granola. I was like, oh, I'll be, and I was like, oh, I do like that, but it was more of a breakfast thing, actually. It used to be granola, a bit of Greek yogurt. Um, and then I was like, mm, it's not sweet enough, a no. bit of honey. So now I'm just smashing in more and more calories. And then and you then go, ah, oh. and then it was lovely and it was really tasty because it was super sweet. And then I've actually gone, this is no better than having, I say it's probably worse than me having mm-hmm. a dessert of or, or that bag of chocolate I might have had potentially. So I was like, oh, yeah, I've got to kick this again. So what do I do? I look for something that's going to still, you know, give me that something to do because that's what it is. It's a habit, really. It's an evening thing. I've eaten dinner. I want something in the evening to sort of, mm-hmm. and actually I've just replaced it now with our, um, I can't actually remember the, the brand if you want to pop the brand out there, Rob, if you yeah, remember. Um, but, um, I'm just watching a Mosquito. Oh yeah, that's, gonna get that's actually gonna get loads of them, wasn't it? Yeah, the other day it was, it was the temperature, I think. Um, four, uh, four sigmatic. Yeah, is, uh, four sigmatic. So we organic got... sort of coffee, mushroom, and tea producer, but they always put mushrooms in it, which is people always think, oh, what you you're drinking mushrooms like magic mushrooms, whatever. But it's it's uh, these herbal based products with um, mushroom supplements in it, so different types of mushrooms, like you've got. The even the evening, it's that reishi mushroom, which is nice, sort of calming effect. Um, for more energy, you've got lion's mane, uh, you've got chaga and uh, cordyceps as well, different mushrooms. And so all these different ones can have a slightly different effect on how you perform, uh, how, how it affects your digestion, perhaps your, your mindset, your brain activity. Um, put with organic coffee, some of the ones that sort of perk you up actually help that caffeine effect as well so it's a little bit of a delayed response to to the caffeine and then some of the you've got like matcha tea lattes and there's all sorts of things they do which is great but um they're one of the better brands i think it's, it's and, and it's, organic but, but certified all, but the reason to say it is is once again is because we're looking at that if you're doing stopped over now are you actually replacing one not so great habit with another not so great habit or are you trying to change it up for something that's maybe a bit of a positive and when we bring into trying to change up something that's a little bit of a positive you can get some really huge results because it's almost like you say you imagine you're in this balance and you're actually slightly negative by drinking alcohol and then you've gone to sort of neutral by not drinking alcohol but then you've brought something good in something that makes you recover better sleep better and do those things you're now in a positive you know and that's a huge difference from point a to point b so um I, that, that's why i think that if you're looking at stopped over maybe go right do you know what can i introduce something else so not only am i less likely to fall back into that old habit when october finishes and i'm not being you know raising money for it but i've actually got something there to go to and go do you know what? i feel a bit feel a bit better for doing it i don't yeah. need to have the alcohol in the evening so people listen to this like yeah i'm really gonna give up my glass of red wine for some mushrooms you know that but mm. actually try something like try something different it doesn't have to be that but it, it might like be peppermint tea or yeah, something it, it can be anything that you want that you're comfortable with doing like, i actually mentioned the mushroom teas and my mum she's like what on earth are yeah. you drinking I mushrooms for now i'm like Whenever what do you I, mean? Yeah. She's like, why? Oh, she's, like, she's like, would you not just eat mushrooms like, like a normal person, fry them up? I'm like, yeah, I would do that, but I'm not going to start frying mushrooms for my evening You're snack. You're probably mode. not going to get those uh, those sorts of mushrooms. Yeah, they're not, they're not your regular mushrooms on the, off, yeah. the, uh, off the door. You know, you're not going to come up and go, oh, yeah, I'll have, uh, I'll have my um, lion's mane, please. And it's yeah. like, what, 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 what's going on? I don't on? know where they're growing. Probably um, some... Yeah, ma- magical farms from the school. Um, so, that, so what I, I think when we look at habits as well, we say is, is putting good habits in and then um, why we always bang on about it i think it's almost probably over the top some people may think but once again it's a habit we talk about it because it's a habit for us it's yeah. because we know how positive it is and we've seen the most uh, let's talk about some successful habits that people do clients do to get success um what would you say the top three habits are that clients are doing uh, well, on a regular basis kind of like um the opposite of what you've, you've said about you don't plan your granola in but you have it daily just out of habit well what if you made a habit of a good breakfast and planned it in in advance perhaps you're gonna then uh, you're not going to be rushing around you're not going to grab something that's probably worse for you most people we see who do well they plan their breakfast now that doesn't mean if you're you have to eat as soon as you get up like people are, oh yeah but i don't like breakfast so i come and do some exercise first and then i can't eat before that i haven't got time before work 
well, you can delay your breakfast. Breaking the fast is kind of the first meal you have, whether that's 6 a.m., you know, 9 a.m., whatever it be, or 12 p.m., 1 p.m., whatever, your first meal of the day. Plan that in somehow. Whether that's not even just exact, you don't have to be exact with your calories and what you're going to eat on that, that meal. Just say, I'm going to have a good breakfast consisting of this, this, and this, perhaps. Um, not your, I don't know, let's call Dean out. What was his... Um, Greg's what's his Greg's choice? Oh yeah, it's well, he, has something his, like he has a, his cheat day. He has, uh, I think you said two you do- two donuts, uh, something like a chicken slice or something or another. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's pr- I mean, like, I mean but, no, he's had but, two like, donuts and whatever else. But you say that's like he's. It's once again, it's like a cheat meal or whatever. And but then then people listen to it. Oh, should I have a cheat meal then? Mm. And we 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 get to go into. I mean, that's a whole different subject about yeah. cheat meals, cheat days. Crikey, I've seen people have cheap weekends and it's like, nah, it doesn't really work unless you've got the rest of it really dialed in and he has. And so he can get away with having a two donut. I mean, I don't think he even enjoys them that much, like from no. what I gather. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm chewing down on this, this. I'm like, that doesn't sound fun. But well, the, the, yeah. um, the point being that even if you had a, a planned a breakfast in somewhere else, somewhere like McDonald's, Greg's, whatever it may be, um, if you'd account for that, maybe if you just said, you know, I'm going to have this rather than going through and missing breakfast or grabbing something then feeling hungry and then not going to affect of worse and worse foods throughout the day maybe in a better place so obviously we'd prefer you to have a, a fairly healthy breakfast which you know people are some breakfast quite a tough one because some people say well what can i have other than eggs and we say well what about oats or what about eggs or oats so they start cutting things out i can't eat oats can't eat eggs can't eat this uh, it does limit what about, down a lot about leftovers from last night you know so that's the reality I, I yeah, always I mean, think it limits down your choices but you, like I say you can be quite creative and say well why not why has it got to be something sweeter or why has it got to be something that's like toast or <laughs> yeah bready or cut you know yeah. feeling like it's croissants or you know all these continental sort of breast you know muffins or or cake bar or whatever it be you know in a coffee but as you say depending on what time you're having breakfast you know if you're not really that fond of eating anything and if your first thing is to do is wake up and have something sweet but that's probably because of the fact you've done it for years and years and years you know you've had some sort of cereal based mm-hmm. food uh from a childhood even um and you've gone to whatever's easy you know pour out of a box add some milk you're on your way um so simplicity is great we know that so that's why obviously if you can plan ahead and do something where you've got a bit more concentration when you're not first thing in the morning you're tired fatigued and you're like oh, i just can't be bothered because it's you know it's darker now it's harder to do and make that effort then yeah possibly planning in advance and having things made prepped is going to be the way to do it for you because you're not likely to go and grab the whatever's easiest thing and yeah you can you have to look at something different you know there's there's lots of different options you don't have to have that sweet thing in but one i, I remember mean and it, once again i know it's odd but it doesn't mean it's wrong and i know a lot of people who do do it and i went through a, a stage where i'd have uh and it sounds actually quite flash but it wasn't really because it was cheap stuff but i'd have salmon so i'd actually have salmon uh, and asparagus mm-hmm. for breakfast which sounds ridiculous but it was one of the best starts i used to have because i used to get up go for a little uh, morning jog and uh, it's when i was super focused or uh, something and and but I wanted the change enough, you know, and I wanted to. And once I did it for a little while, it became quite normal. Mm. But it, it, I normalised it by doing it regularly. Um, and I, you know, because it was it was beneficial to me. You know, you might be like, oh, I'm not cooking salmon in the morning, but you don't have to. Once again, you can cook you see, a couple of pieces of salmon in the evening, or it might even be smoked salmon. You know, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be salmon, but. It, you know, you have that and you get some greens and, and whatever. And what a great start it was today. And, and, you know, rightly so. Again, it's your mindset. How do you feel about doing that? You might feel a little bit odd for doing it, but you feel pretty positive. You feel pretty good in your head. You're a bit like, wow, I've had a, I'd say I've had a pretty good start in comparison to most people today. And yeah. I know it's not about anybody else, but if you can give yourself that mindset that you've done something really good for yourself, very start of the day and you're giving yourself the best opportunity to kickstart, then you're like, well, if I'm eating salmon for breakfast, I'm not going to you know do this up the wall now because you know I've, I've made the effort to do that in the morning that's the hardest thing do the hardest thing first we you know we talk about showers and all these different things but if i'm challenging myself first thing in the morning i can overcome eating salmon for breakfast then do you know what anything's easy you know anything's easy if, if you find that a challenge but you know it's quite fun it's quite fun yeah. doing something different you feel steak you and feel, eggs i tried for a while yeah yeah nice Looking up steak you're like wow this, you don't really like i said you don't want to go back on the quality of food that you eat first thing and ruin it with a mcdonald's or something do you no i mean you know once again the, we know these aren't 
normal things, you know, not everyone's getting up and cooking steak. And, it, and you, you say that people are like, oh, it's really expensive. It's not, it's not really expensive. You know, there are ways around doing these things. But then also, if you have a good quality breakfast, you're not once again scratching around for, you know, snacks or things when you're out and about. Because the reality is, if you go and pick up a, I don't know what's it called, uh, a tiffin or something from Costa Coffee. That probably costs you two, pe- as well two or pound fifty yeah. or something. Then you've got your coffee. You know, you've probably spent five pound on breakfast. When it's, you get up and have some good quality steak, eggs, and whatever, that might even cost you what say three fifty if you're buying meat in box. It's not like you have to buy whatever one one off pieces. It might cost you four or five pound, but I can believe you me, you can get a lot more out of eating the steak, eggs, and having a good um, coffee based whatever it be from home than you are versus you know, getting a, a chocolate tiffin and a, and a cost of coffee, mm. you know, but Indeed. one and might be a little bit easier for sure if you're not planned, but, um, you know, frying up a quick, even if it's a quick fry sauce, like steak or whatever, a piece of, like, you know, thin meat for breakfast, it takes seconds. It takes, you know? Yeah, it's not that long to do a, a grilled breakfast. I mean, people might say, um, if I only have half an hour in the morning, I only have an hour, I only have, I've got to get the kids ready. Um, but really, I, what, if you, if you were to compare buying a box of cereal, Pouring it in a bowl, putting milk on, eating it. That's, it's quite quick, right? Yeah, of course but it is, yeah. How, how do you feel after eating that? Does it mean you go and crave foods an hour, hour, hour down the line? Um, do you feel hungry? Do you feel lethargic? Do you, does, if does I was to have just a bowl of cereal now, I'd be eating again ravenous. in half an hour now. But no then worries. if you had, um, you could have like chipolata, chicken sausages, a couple of rashes of bacon, um, even cut off the rind if you want you know, save to the, save the calories there crack a couple of eggs in a pan, even a slice of toast, like granary bread or something. It doesn't even have to be brown, it could be white. Um, it, it, we're not sort of saying that you've got to be completely organic and, and clean, whatever, you know, that's, that's a label obviously that we don't really technically use like clean foods and stuff. But if someone's to say brown bread versus white bread, people probably say brown is better. If they to say, you know, fried egg versus a scrambled egg, cr- scrambled usually better, right? So there, there is labels to food, but you can also do a breakfast. A fry breakfast is not a fry breakfast like you'd think in a greasy spoon. If you do it at home, you can grill things. You can make it really sort of quite, you know, you quite lean veggies, in its you calories. You veggies right? in it, can't you, as well? Like, you, know, you can grill tomatoes, tomato, mushrooms, and spinach, some, yeah, and, spinach uh, mushrooms in, there. in there. And then you've got a nice, quite, and they're really simple and they're good. And you, and you bring different things to your breakfast, you know, different qualities, different vitamins, different things coming in as well. Yeah, um, and timing can, wise, I was going to say that the, it, it is longer than a, pouring a bowl of cereal but you feel so much better getting that meal in and it could only be like three or four hundred calories max and it's quite a filling meal but it just takes time and planning and that's kind of what the, the point being you can that, even double that up it sounds really silly but you can even double it up where you cook twice the amount and then that becomes your lunch as well like if you're happy enough eating so you know, have that and then you go again and you have another mm. you know another little fried breakfast as you call it later on in the day and then you've got cooked your breakfast and your lunch well there you go you've saved your time and you've got some pretty good food going mm-hmm. on for the rest of the day um so right so being prepared is one of the one of the top things yeah breakfast, uh, breakfast being prepared. i think breakfast is a big sort of key star once again power of the morning get kind powerful, of leads on to um drinking more water is, is a big one right uh, carrying water around with you maybe a 500 ml bottle if you if you if you're out and about obviously you don't want to carry a, a two liter jug but if you're static and you you you're at work having that bottle you can refill potentially, um, but trying to get a good couple of liters in across the day because like, we've done it as well. You start the morning, you just grab a coffee, you sit at the desk, you do do some work, get another coffee, maybe we'll train and we do, you know, we'll have some protein after with water in for sure. But there's no, like, we, we don't really, um, let's say we in general, like the, the population, I suppose, probably the majority of us drink more flavored drinks than we do water. I think we we spoke about this quite a lot, haven't we? And I remember saying that one of my biggest habits that I'm most grateful that I put in was drinking a pint of water first thing I do in the morning yeah. before anything. Like just have a pint of water because you're dehydrated. Like, like how dehydrated are you throughout the evening? You know, throughout the night. If you don't drink water throughout the night, which you probably don't, you possibly already been to loo once or twice in the night as well. Um, you know, you're you, we know that as much as your brain being such a, a potentially a small organ or, or takes up a small percentage of you know your thing but it, it drives over you know a good 20 percent you know straight away like of your hydration you know and, and if you've got a lack of hydration your brain can't function so you're trying to optimally do anything you know you're dehydrated you're you, you know you've not got 
you know, a chance really, you know, mm. and you follow your mind in things and, it's just, and that's water. And as you say, most people get up, I've got coffee next to me, but I have already drunk two pints of water this morning. Uh, yeah. It's what well, I don't even know, it was seven, just gone seven o'clock, I had two pints of water before seven o'clock this morning. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm having a coffee now, so I can speak really fast on this podcast. But, um, you know, it's, you know, the, the, the problem is people go, oh, I've had coffee. Well, I've had, I've had seven cups of coffee, so I've had some water. Mm. No, no, no. And you've, plus the diuretics, and you know, you've got opposite things going. So, um, I think we see habit, people, we? don't we? Yeah, that who do really well tend to drink more water. They choose water when they go out. They maybe have a bottle with them, um, and they've, they've got a, out of the habit of needing flavour. It's funny when someone says, "Oh, I don't like the taste of water." Well, I know that some waters can taste slightly different, but generally, it's just tasteless, right? So they don't like the they don't they don't not like not like the taste. They don't like the habit of having to drink water versus the flavours they're used to. And they're like, oh, yeah, but I need something sweet and flavoursome, or that's the thing that they, they don't want it to get It's funny, over. though, when you got out. because I, So we, we've been out, obviously, a couple of times, doing not a great deal, but just been out and about, seeing people, and uh, went to restaurants, and everyone's ordering a drink. And I would rather water over... If I, it sounds silly, if I'm not drinking alcohol, I want water, really. I'm not that mm. fussed about another drink. Like, coffee is every now and again. Um, maybe a Diet Coke. I don't actually really enjoy it. If I think about it, step back... I'm only yeah, having no, that, so I'm not having a water. Because if you go, oh, I'll have a water, please. It's almost like everyone looks at you. It's like, You're tired. oh, water. Just drink buy again. a drink. I'm like, I'll pay for the bottle of water. I've yeah. got no issue with that. It's not the it's not the, the purchasing the water, although I don't feel like I should purchase the water. But it isn't the purchasing <laughs> the water. Um, give me a bottle. But I would rather have water, um, especially when eating. And I, and I know people mm. say you shouldn't drink whilst eating and things like that. And But I just, I enjoy it. You know, that's, I actually enjoy it. I enjoy water then more than any other drink. Like, you know, people go out, beer, curry. No, no, can't do it. Don't enjoy it. Doesn't, it puts me off my food, takes flavors away from there. I, I, don't, I don't enjoy it. So, but if you order water on a way out, on a night out or a day out or a meal or whatever, people are a little bit like, hmm, is this guy up to drinking water, hydration and trying to, he's obviously a health freak, you know, but it's mm. like, no, it's just, it is, it's good. It take, you know, it's, it's one of those things. It's, you feel beneficial. You feel the benefits of drinking water. You drink a Diet Coke or something, you probably want water afterwards. You know, it's weird. Yeah. It's, it actually hydrates you. It make, you know, you feel really positive after drinking a lot of water. Um, you obviously need the loo a lot, but that's fine. You know, that's, it's one of those things. So water is a big one we go over a lot. Yeah, um, some probably this, now we're getting into a colder stage of the year, then um, probably people are going to, go for hotter drinks yeah versus colder drinks hot so, water yeah no but um just be want to be aware of i suppose really that the excess consumption of say coffees and teas throughout the day versus just having water itself um yeah maybe make sure you do obviously carry that bottle around with you or um whatever works for you really that's it uh and we're gonna go for your third what would you say your your third top habit would be because you say listen there are obviously plenty of other habits and things that people were doing daily and we see um and you know these aren't the only three and these possibly aren't the top three of all times but these are pretty pretty consistent ones that we see from people doing you know and these are just say having breakfast um and getting that right has a lot of knock-on effects right mm -hmm. having water with you has a huge amount of knock-on effects uh what would you say the, the third top habit would you say so um again related to the time of day uh, time of year sorry and um how things are going this is going to be harder for people to do, but it's brilliant when the sun's out, it's nice and warm, the, the mornings are light, the evenings are light. You can get out, you do more walking each day, right? Keep active, uh, planning in walking breaks, potentially in your your work day. Now people are probably going to stay indoors. Like I spent four hours in the rain, it was miserable yesterday playing golf, right? But that's a, that's a walk outdoors. It's a planned break. It wasn't very enjoyable, but I did it. I did like whatever, 15,000 steps or something felt pretty active for it obviously my hand does hurt from that, that fail but other than that obviously i moved and i felt good most people just can when the weather goes bad they just stay indoors it's like hibernating isn't it get, get the blankets up you know they yes, do very, so li time. very little in because it's dark you think it's later as well yeah. you know we um you know we got back yesterday we we're doing some bits and we'd been out and we'd been for a walk funnily enough and um Sue's doing really well. She's loving her walking. Like she did. That's basically all she has done throughout the whole of lockdown, which is great, you know. And, mm -hmm. and hats off. And it was funny because we walked past somebody, you know. Oh, how, wait, when's the due date? We're like, oh, on the thirteenth. They're like, oh, what are you doing now? You should be indoors. I was like, what? <laughs> what? 
you should be indoors. Like, you get inside and just sit and wait for that child to come yeah, out. It could be another true. two weeks. It could be three weeks. I don't know, maybe. But possibly not. Hopefully not. But what just well, what, day, what what point do you just have yeah. to sit inside and hope the baby comes out come on come out now <laughs> but it, but we're walking a lot and as you say it's not always great weather but then we got back and uh it was weird because i was i was done like, i was like i was like ah oh, done sunday sunday night start. it was mm. half five it was it starting to get yeah. dark it was half five um and we actually had other stuff to do but it does promote you to feel a little bit lazy so you, and this once again is me saying about the power of the morning like i'm a big believer in like in it drives sue nuts it really does just like why do you have to get up and get everything done in the morning because i'm like in the morning i'm motivated if i get it all done then i've done my things it's like i've ticked like we talk mm. about three rocks time and time again all my three things to do to succeed today boom 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 I, I almost have to wake up and try and achieve them as fast as possible because then if I do get, you know, that sneaky dark weather gets me and goes, right, sit down on the sofa, come to the warm. I know I've done my activity. Like if you were to have gone home last night and just sat down, you've done 15,000 steps, right? You've done mm-hmm. activity. You've gone out, you've got fresh air. You know, you've inhaled, you know, you've you embraced that. And that walking is, as I say, once again, not over strenuous. It's something you can do any time. It's something you can do with near like, most of the people around you. So it's nice if you have to, uh, I know it could be loved ones, you know, grandparents, it could be, you know, niece, it could be children, it could be whoever it is, uh, and you can all do it, you know, and like you go out and you might be walking to a park, you might be walking around a golf course, it could be, you know, just walking around the, the housing estate. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You just, you know, get that fresh air mm. and feel really good. And as you say, it could be that, you know, your lunch times. You have to be half prepared for it. As you said yesterday, you had lack of equipment to keep you dry, really, as much as you you know, you know weren't in. You might have to take an umbrella, some waterproofs, whatever, but it can be quite fun. You know, little kids love it. Get them in the boots. They'll be jumping in the puddles, doing yeah. whatever. Dogs love it. I haven't got a dog, mm-hmm. but apparently they love it. Um, I quite enjoy it, to be honest. I've, I think it's quite... Always got this... Uh, satisfaction really strangely playing sports in the rain heavy rain because everyone always got their heads down I was like no come on I felt a little bit like um, I was going to say Braveheart but I don't know if that's it but I was like come on let's have the rain embrace it and it, it fires you up you can get energised yeah. by it you know mm-hmm. you can but it's getting out there and doing it and as you said this time of year it's a lot tougher but this is what I think is secretly sneaks up on people about they, they talk about Christmas about putting on the Christmas pounds right that one or two days you might have put on a couple of pounds but when you got like crept on eight pounds over winter and you blame it on the Christmas dinner, I was like, mm-hmm. eh, you've eaten turkey, pretty lean. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's not, not that. It's not the one day, 4,000 calories know, on one day. You, you, is you, it? Might, you might have put on a few pounds, but it's probably crept up because you've done a lack of activity for the last two or three months. Mm-hmm. You know, we're October, as we say now, November, December. You might write off the next three or four months in terms of your steps, whereas over summer, you know, you might have done and been really active with it. I think it's a big challenge. Can people keep up their steps? How many how people mu- are how actually... How much harder is it? How many people have written off this year already and said, well, I'll start in 2021 for their people health are, and fitness? People That's are already advertising. Crazy, isn't it? I'm even seeing gyms advertising for 2021. They're writing off. I'm like, no, no, guys, we've still got three months here. Got right? 90 got, days. We said it was like the first, yeah, so you pretty what, much what can you achieve beginning in, of this month. The next 90 days. What could you achieve? So much, so, so much. Like if you were to just, let's say, build in one good habit each month, that's three solid habits you could mm-hmm. have by the end of the year. Imagine having these three top habits we've just spoke about by, achieved by the end of the year that you drank two litres plus of water. It wasn't even a thing to think about. You had a really good positive start to your day with good breakfast and things along those lines. 10,000 steps was easy. Mm. You could do it backwards. You know, you're now, you're now hitting 12, 15,000 steps. And you could do that as a habit daily. You know, imagine doing that. How that would just change. Just these three little habits. They're saying well, they're little yeah. habits. They, they're part, they form part of our habit tracker, right? And yeah. Here's, yeah, any of our members listening, um, you, can, you can now track that on the, the app. We just, we're trialing a software that makes it even easier to track your habits. Um, for anyone who's not a member, then I can I'll list the habits right now. We've done a couple of them already, right? So water, drink more water, eat protein with every meal, eat more veggies, walk 10,000 steps, track your structured exercise sessions, sleep seven hours or more, uh, no alcohol, no you know, zero refined sugar. And they, there's eight powerful habits, but can that, that can actually lead to overwhelm because it's like, wow, there's too many things to do. So we've, we've kept them pretty simple, but even if people were to pick the, the probably the most powerful ones for them, track them over 90 days. Like Seriously, if you did that, three times over. So we do, we do it on a four week basis. So yeah, 28 days really. But if you do it three times over to, towards the end of the year, you're going to be absolutely flying. Definitely. And I think with that, when you talk about overwhelm, especially with habits, maybe just focus on one at a time. Uh, you know, you might be able to get a couple in there, but keep the thing, 
the thing that's important, keep it the most important thing, the most important thing. Yeah. That sounds kind of weird, but focus on it and make sure it is the most important thing. You know, when, when we do these things, you know, we can get so distracted by other things. You go, oh, well, I've got to do that. I've got to do this. I've got to, I've got to walk that. I can't do that. I've got to go to the gym. And it's like, whoa, slow down. Okay, let's look at the things you can do daily. Let's start to build that. Tick that box, keep it in there. You know, if we can incorporate another one, do so. I mean, the idea of these um, habits, they're, they're all there to be fairly simple. There are going to be some more challenging ones, like having protein with every meal, especially if you don't know mm -hmm. where, where your protein sources can come from. Because if you're, every time you say protein, you go eggs, and you're like, oh, I don't yeah. like eggs, you're like, ooh, I'm unstuck. You know, mm -hmm. if, if it's meat, and you're like, oh, I don't really want to eat meat, or I don't like meat, then you do have to look at the other options, you know, about where can I get them from, you know, the different, you know, plant based, you know, it might be for whatever. So, uh, having those things in, in play, you know, is key. And, and to, to make sure that you're going to succeed with those, as we said, it's creating uh, an environment that you can succeed in. You know, we, uh, weirdly, I went, um, not weirdly, it's not that weird at all. We, we've, we've just done up a room in the house. Mm -hmm. um, real old conservatory, we've made it a warm room or whatever, little one, so it's basically going to have a playroom. But also went and bought some furniture and I bought this chair. It's outrageous, by the way. Bright yellow, completely. Mm -hmm. I mean, brighter than the ones I was sat on. And I'm like, wow, it's quite a large chair, but I was, I was distracted. Um, anyway, purchased this chair, and I was like, this is gonna be a good chair in the morning. This is gonna be my morning chair. So I'd like to do my breathing in the morning. Um, and this room now feels like a room I can get some real space in. For the last however many years, I've kind of just been perching on this, oh, that's my popping pee again, perching on this um, almost like a bar stool in the kitchen, like the, mm. the you know, to, it's not ever been that comfortable, but no, I've, 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 couple. Sort of, it's I, terrible I've on your sit, back. And but I'm sat here with my yeah. hands on, trying to sort of do my breathing to try and stay a bit upright and uh, doing. It. I'm like, whenever I get off, it, I'm like, it's just not right, you know. I want to feel relaxed. So I, I was, I was testing chairs and I sat on it. I was like, oh, this is a good breathing chair. So it was like, what are you on about? I was like, <laughs> you can just imagine because I've got light around me. Maybe not in the winter, but if not, you know, it'll be rain. But it's all glass around me. And I feel like it's a nice environment. I feel a little bit like I'm outdoors, not necessarily. If it's warm, I'll be able to open the windows and have a good chair to do my breathing in. I'm like, it's going to be a good space. I love my optimism as well, by the way, because no doubt in two weeks' time, there's just going to be this little... And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to breathe, baby. I'm trying to breathe. Get out of your chair. Yeah, I'm like, oh, oh, if, help if that baby sits in my chair, I'm telling you, whoo -hoo, he's going to be in trouble. <laughs> um, Wow, it's going to be a game changer. Um, so creating the right environment, but it was, it was like, now, when we, we talk about when we're trying to succeed, environments obviously can be different things. This is an environment. To, to have done this podcast, you know, um, we, we created a podcast environment and we feel comfortable mm -hmm. in it and, and you feel like you're doing it rather than just sat down sitting looking at a phone with a, with a whatever microphone. It was just a bit, but because we, we have it, it's easy for us to come in, do our thing, drop it, leave, because it's just, when things are ready for you to succeed, if you've got an office and it's packed full of loads of stuff, it's distracting, you know? If you come in and there's letters there or there's books there or there's a, a, a note from someone and a, if you come into a clear desk, you, your computer, and you've not got loads of tabs open, you can be successful in it. But then some, if you've got, you know, an app there, your phones, phones are the biggest ones, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're terrible, they're so bad. But if you want to succeed, you've got to have, you know, potentially applications turn off or, or whatever it may be it might be that actually you put you, you know on like a working mode or whatever it, whatever, whatever you want um you know you might have it on silent and, and away from you um at the moment my phone's obviously on loud in case i get a, a, a call to whatever but i try to often keep it on silent keep it away from me if i'm doing any reading or written work and then go to it creating times for that distraction you know so actually i know i'm gonna have to check at some point my my phone for whatsapp messages and work messages and whatever but creating those times but mm -hmm. if you've not got the right environment to succeed at home with your healthy habits if you're trying to give up alcohol you don't want alcohol in your house right you don't you, you but you might have a wine rack you might have a whatever but if you've got in your fridge loads of beers they're just sitting there looking cold and chilled and you've had a stressful day and you're the sort of person that goes for that that's driving me nuts going for that beer at the end of the day to relax then you don't need them there. If you're the sort of person that you know you're going to be smashing chocolate, don't have it in the cupboards. We've talked about this time and time again. Don't have it there. Create an environment that that wants you to succeed. You know, uh, create a place that you feel comfortable. That you know what, whatever your task is, you can go in, get it done, and come out again if you need to. Yeah. If it's a gym, create the right environment to go in, get it done. You know, go to a place that you feel comfortable that you can get all the right things there. If you're sort of going to a place where you're a little bit, oh, I can't really do this. I'm having to do this. I'm having to. You know, I know I'm hearing stories a lot recently where people are going in and like, oh, you know, I've tried this program out, but it's a disaster. I can never get it done. We've got an hour in there. 
whenever I want to get onto the machines, it's jammed. I've got to wait for him to do that and clean down. And they're, they're really sort of almost getting disheartened. And the last thing you need right now, especially when it's hard to motivate yourself to do anything, is something that makes it a more of a challenge. It puts another barrier in there. You want to come in, you want to be, you know, you want to have the, the right training system in front of you, you know, the right program that you can go in, get it done, bosh, and out. You know, once again, if your training program's eight to 12 different movements, it's going to take you an hour and a half and you're trying to cram it into a, a, an hour block or whatever, you're never going to succeed. You, no. you already, you already, and then you feel like you're not doing enough. So find a program that takes 45 minutes. Give yourself more time than you need. You know, get in there, get it done, get out, and, and, it, and the overwhelm doesn't happen. You know, we've talked about breaking things down into small, simple steps. So many times I've seen to people, and they keep going, oh, yeah, but I just haven't got the time for this. I'm just like, two minutes. What was that? We did a video the other day, didn't we? We did that video, and you were taking a mic in the background, doing abs in the background yeah. for two-minute abs. So uh, we, yeah, that was called Just that's Habit, it. because it was an ab thing. People are like, oh, do two minutes of abs a day. You did two minutes of abs. Tell me how your abs felt the next day. Uh, I did feel them the other day. Too. Yeah, and that, and, that, and that was that's from a highly trained person, but you don't focus on that particular area, and you were going like a crazy person. You probably did about four hundred reps in two minutes. Well, that's stupid, that's like know? someone would be doing in the gym because they think they've seen it, and yeah, you know, like I said, the, the six minute abs or whatever it is, and um, people think that's effective, and uh, well, I've got to go flat out. But then they think actually, when you said about oh, it's got to be, um, you know, sets of eight to twelve four sets of each movement 12 movements it hasn't got to be that specific it's got to be just something that you feel you can there's less stress to get in if you if you were um had that plan in front of you and you're like oh, I've got to get all this in you look at the gym in front of you the one you go to might be absolutely packed you're like this is gonna be a long session oh no i've got to get in i've got to then your mind starts thinking ahead and going well i need to plan my food tonight you know for tomorrow tonight as well um, i've got to do this thing for work i've got i've got to get my tv time in then stress just kind of comes down. That session's not going to be very impactful, really. So cut the movements down. It's not going to be any less effective, probably more effective, if, even if you just made it more simpler and had that plan versus just, you know, it's, it's basically, it's, as you said, setting yourself up for success versus just trying to do th what you think is right for the time and, and, and kind of half doing it really yeah make sure whatever it is you're going to go and do make sure you've got the right environment set up and it's going to give you the you know the best opportunity to do it if you're if you're somebody who's got a day where you're gonna to have to sit at your desk give yourself a good clean desk get less distractions on it give yourself certain times to have your breaks hopefully in that break you go and uh, drink some water do a walk whatever it may be you know if you're somebody who's going to the gym get your stuff sorted get everything that you need get a simple plan go to there if you're someone doing a podcast, have a podcast, no, just have it, you know, but just have the things there that make things simple. You're going to have a much more chance of uh, being able to succeed. Creating an environment also includes being surrounded by the people that want you to do well. Um, you know, if you're trying to do something and work out at home, but everyone's like tugging on you, wanting you to do that, be dad, be partner, be whatever, doesn't want you to work out, then that's not going to work either. You know, you might have to go and find a safe space in the garage, in the garden, whatever it is, but you need to get yourself that space. Um, so the thought of the day to day. The way to get started is to quit talking and get doing. That was Walt Disney. So there you go, bring it back. I'm already getting into the, the children theme, um, but it is so true. You know, too many people talk about doing things and oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it. Just get doing it, you know, get mm -hmm. started. You find out what you're doing, get doing it, fail. You know, find out what you need to do to change. See what you need to do to become more successful with it. Look, learn, write down, follow a different plan if you need to get, get say we talk about it time and time again, but if you don't take action if you keep talking about doing things it never gets done uh you know we're all we're all guilty of it we're all guilty of it in some way shape or form we talk about things like oh, i'm gonna get this done i'm gonna start this when or oh, i'm gonna talk about just do it you know oh i'm gonna do this i saw this challenge i'm gonna do just do it just get it done just go for it you know absolutely go head at it do the things that are challenging do the things that maybe make you uncomfortable you know try and fail almost you know try and do it even though you know you're going to fail because you'll then know the answer as to why you failed hopefully um, and you'll have learned a lesson but it's that talking about doing things you hear it time and time again people saying oh, I'm going to do this or oh, I'm going to do that I'm going to no just do it so stop talking about it get started get it doing and uh, and see how you get on yeah if relating to the habits today just go and buy a water bottle BPA free water bottle don't you reuse your, your plastic mineral ones and then uh, and fill that up drink more water plan your walking break in today do it now um, and yeah, what was the, the third one? I forget. You what, sorry, third the habit? third habit we talked about. 
breakfast, get it started, course, get yeah, planned yeah, up, plan the breakfast, sorted, yeah. Get it, get it, go, go, get it done. About food. That's it, yeah. Um, <laughs> lack of water, I reckon that is. Yeah, that's the lack yeah. of water. So um, make a plan, get it done, get started, do it today. Today's Monday, just because it's not first thing, you haven't planned it before Monday. Today's Monday. Uh, you won't have listened to this on Monday. You'll listen to possibly Tuesday, but it doesn't make any difference. You might have listened to it Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. It doesn't make a difference. Get yeah. it started, Don't okay? Wait till Monday. It's, <laughs> today is Monday. No matter what day it is, it's Monday. Put it that way in your head yeah. so you can get started. Actually, the real biggest trick is start on a Friday because then if you succeed over the weekend the rest of the week's easier yeah and if you like this video see if you're watching videos if you listen to the podcast then we've got tons of videos coming out and obviously we've, we've recorded a lot of content with Ollie um, so check the YouTube channel for, for recent ones uh, our Facebook page as well follow us there and there's some real helpful stuff coming along yeah uh, yeah some powerful stuff as well some in-depth uh, don't tutorials. think about it just do it just go watch it just go and follow yeah watch just commit to it and done done Love. perfect cheers guys thank you very much bye bye peace